Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 1.3. We're going to talk about significant figures and density, which is a lot longer than those two words, but it's in there. All right. Numbers to mathematicians are ideas. Scientists live in the uh, real world where numbers are usually estimates. So the only time they're not going to be an estimate is if it's a counted number. So, for example, why these are estimates. If I said I live 40 miles away, if I really live 38 miles away, am I a liar? I hope you would say no, right? Because if you say 40, you understand there's some wiggle room with that zero. If it was 41 miles away, am I a liar? I hope you would say no. What if I said if I live 40.0 miles away? So if I said I live 40.0 miles away and I live 38 miles away, I'm not telling the truth. So then, yes, I would be a liar. That point zero means that the zero is significant. So zeros are sometimes significant, and significant means measured. And measured could also mean estimated. Remember, estimations count. Estimations matter. I put estimations instead of estimated. Sometimes zeros are just placeholders. If my GPA was 0.0, .0 those zeros are significant. If Bill Gates has $10 trillion, billion dollars, $10 billion, those zeros are not significant because Bill Gates really has eleven billion nine hundred thirty two million four hundred and seventeen thousand thirty three hundred twenty dollars and nineteen cents. So but saying ten billion dollars is good enough, but those zeros are just placeholders. You can't say they're not important, right? Those zeros are placeholders. He doesn't have one dollar, he has ten billion dollars. So there you go. How do I tell when a zero is measured? So zeros on the left of a decimal need a number on the right. 10.3 wrong. So let me say this about 20 times. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. Here's zero on the left of the decimal. It needs a number on the right of that zero. Hey, there's one. That means it's significant. So this would have, this is a significant zero, and have one, two, three, four, four sig figs. A hundred. These are zeros on the left of the decimal. The decimal doesn't show up, but in my mind's eye, it's right there. So zeros on the left need a number on the right. It doesn't have one. So this only has one sig fig, and these zeros are not significant. They're important, but they're not measured. Okay. $1,000.79 or whatever that would be. Um, these are zeros on the left, and they need a number on the right, and they do. Oh, look, it's there. Oh, look, it's there. Oh, look, it's there. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six sig figs. And anything that's non-zero is always going to be significant. 109, 1, 2, 3. So again, decimal point is right here in my mind's eye. Zero on the left needs a number on the right. Didn't have it. Zero on the left needs a number, meaning not zero on the right. Doesn't have it. Zero on the left has a number on the right. No, no. So these, none of these are significant. But over here, this is zero on the left. It needs a number on its right. The number nine is on the right of that. So this one has three sig figs. Zeros on the right need a number on the left. Zeros on the right need a number on the left. Zeros on the right need a number on the left. Zeros on the right need a number on the left. This is zero on the right. Needs a number on its left. Hey, look, there's a five. That's significant. That has three sig figs. Zeros on the right need a number on the left. This is on the right. Is there a number on its left? No. This on the right is a number on its left? No. Zero on the right, number on its left? No. So these are not significant. Here's a zero still on the right. Does it have a number on its left? Yes. Zero on the right, does it have a number on its left? Yes. So that means the significant numbers on this guy, there are four sig figs. Zero on the right needs a number on its left. It has it. One, two, three, four, four sig figs. Zero on the right needs a number on its left. It has one. This one's good. This is a zero on the left. Zeros on the left need a number on the right. This one's a yes, too. One, two, three, four, five, five sig figs. And then there's always the dummy zero. If I have 0 0.70, I just want to point out, no one really has to use this zero ever. All this zero is here for is for teachers to make you feel bad because there's zero point and it says, hey, dummy, look at the decimal. You don't need it. And most of you don't write it. So the zero in front of it is not significant. So if it's just 0 point something, that would be the same thing as 0 0.70. So if you think of it in the simpler form, the zero is not significant. How many significant figures that each of these numbers contain? Dummy zero. Zero on the right needs a number on the left. None. Three sig figs. This one doesn't have any zeros, so two sig figs. These are two zeros on the right, and they have a number on the left. That's the one. 
366. Uh, I'll put two on zeros down there because it's a mistake. This is a zero. Here's my decimal point, right? Zero is on the left. Data number on the right. That three is on the right. So that has four sig figs. This one doesn't have any zeros. Notice scientific notation makes sig figs easier because you don't have to worry about where those zeros are. And that would be three sig figs. This one only has one sig fig. So those zeros in scientific notation are not significant. Round these to three significant figures. So when I round this to three, I look at the first four. Does five round up two? And we talked to Whisker about this. With the new rounding rules, five does not equal go up. If it is five, you go up to make it even. Or for five, you go down to make it even. So, believe it or not, it makes, it balances the world's rounding a little bit better. So, this one would be set 5, we'll not round it up to 3, so it's going to be 43, 20. Uh, to round up 3, 6, 6, look at the first 4. Bam, does 3 round up 7? Nope. So, 6.87, notice I leave off the 0, times 10 to the 3rd. This one, dummy 0. Look at the first 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Does 5 round up 3? Yep, to make it even, 0.17. Four. So I round to three out of the first four. So one, two, three, four. Does three round up nine? Nope. 7.89. Again, scientific notation, but I'm still looking at the first four. Does seven round up three? Absolutely. 9.24 times 10 to the negative third. Dummy zero. Look at the first four sig figs. Now I want to point out that this zero is not significant. Because the zero on the right needs a number on the left, and it doesn't have one. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Does 8 round up 9? Yes, it does. So it would be point O, and then that keeps running, 3, O, O. These zeros are significant because of the 3. Plus and minus them. Round to the fewest number of decimal places. This has two decimal places. This has one decimal place. So this would be 4 point, the calculator tells me it's 4.21, but I round it to one decimal place. So it should be 4.2. Point oh two five. so this one has 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places. This has none. So believe it or not, this my calculator would tell me 1.0225, but the correct answer is just plain old 1. Let's have different numbers of decimal places. is dumb, but you still need to know the rules. So no one would measure something with, you know, like a super digital balance that would go this far, and then, like, a cheesy balance that I have 1. I'm just going to do the odds here. So if I do this, oh, I ask my kids for calculator and they brought me the cheaper one. So 2.345 plus 6.487. The calculator tells me 8.832, but I have three decimal places here and three decimal places here. So this one is good the way it is because it has three decimal places. Okay. Um, oh, man. Uh, I want a calculator with a scientific notation on it. Okay, but I guess what I would do is expand this out. So 2,700 is what that first part is, and this is 36700. Oh, oh. Right? One, oops, oh. So I'm going to add these together. Um, this would be zero. Sorry to do this so badly. Zero, seven. This is 13, um, which would make this six. So this would be 63,700. Now I'd like to point out that, um, now that I've done this, 2,700, this one has that spot. This is the spot that's significant. And this spot is not significant. See how I only have the two there? So that means that this spot is not significant. But I do use it to round. So this is 64,000 or 6.4 E4. Okay. For five, same type of deal. Put it in regular notation, 0. 0.00084 minus 0. 0.00689. So if I put a zero here, I'm going to do some borrowing here. So this would be 1. That makes this a 3. Makes this 15. Uh, oh, I had to borrow again, didn't I? Yep. Borrow, that makes it a 7. So this makes it a 1. And then I keep my zeros, 0, 0, 0. Now, this decimal place was no good, right? 
So that means this one is no good. But I'm still going to use it to round. So does it round up to 5? Nope. So the answer is 0. 0.00015. And I don't like to see three zeros, so I would make that 1.5 e negative 4. Okay. So that's that one. Times and then divides them. Times and divides them. Count the sig figs in each factor and round to the fewest number of sig figs. So this, for example, has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. So ask my calculator, 3.12 times 15.1 is 47.112. I'm going to round the fewest number of sig figs, which is three, which would be 47.1. Five times 11, you'd think, is 55. But notice this is one sig fig. This is two sig figs. So my correct answer is 60. So I have one sig fig. This is a zero on the left. It needs a number on the right. Again, having different sig figs and doing calculations is dumb, but follow the rules. So we'll do this one and this one. Uh, we'll do 7 and 9. We'll do the odds. Uh, 456 times 21 is, oh my goodness, 10565. Oh, my calculator lied to me. So we get for not clearing it and using a calculator that you get free in a wallet. 456 times 21 is 9576. And I need to round this to two sig figs. So to round it to two, I look at the first three. Does seven round up five? Yep. So it's 96. So if I have $9,576, I have about $9,600. So I need to do that, and that way I'll have two sig figs. By the way, this guy has one, two, three, four, five sig figs. This guy has two sig figs. So my answer should have how many? Two sig figs. So clear. Oops, on. 124.07. Divided by 5.3, my calculator says 23.409433. But I know I ran to two sig figs, which would be 23. All right. Density is an intensive physical property. Now, this sadly was on worksheet number one. An intensive physical property means one that is constant and doesn't change. So your density is constant, and you can use it to identify things. So it can't, And density can be used for separating things. More dense things sink they're not going to dissolve. Yeah. Density is a ratio of mass over volume. So the formula for density is, well, I guess that's right here. Oops. The formula for density is mass over volume. What weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? Ha, ha, ha. What a joke. They're the same. They're both a pound. Ha, ha, ha. Now, the reason why that joke is even remotely funny is feathers, they don't weigh a little. Feathers have a low density. So they don't have much mass for their size. And bricks have a high density. High density. Which means they have a high mass for their size. Density is love. And what I mean by that is, look, the formula looks like a heart. Aw, oh, mass over volume with a knife through it. Okay, So density is mass over volume. And remember, mass is typically in grams or something like it. And volume is in milliliters or liters or something like it. And the units for density is typically grams over milliliters or whatever mass unit over volume unit. So take a peeky here. If a one gram sample of platinum metal has a volume of, I'm oh, sorry, 100 gram sample, 4.669, what is the density of platinum? Well, density equals mass over volume. And I'm in grams, and I'm in milliliters, but I asked for centimeters cubed. But hey, I'm tricky. I know that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. So 4.669 milliliters equals 4.669 centimeters cubed. So density is going to be 100 grams over, notice how I did have to change the units, 4.669. See what my 30 cent calculator tells me. I turned it off by mistake. One hundo divided by 4.669 is 21.4178. Now, this dot right here means all of my zeros are significant. So this has three sig figs. This has four sig figs. So my best answer would be three sig figs, which is 21.4 grams per centimeter cubed. Find the volume of an object whose density is 3.14 and a mass of 87.9. Density equals mass over volume. So we're number three. Density is 3.14. I'm just checking the units. Grams. This is grams, so that's good. And my mass is 
So that means when I solve for volume, that unit will come out in milliliters. So whenever I have my variable in my denominator, I hate it and I get so upset right away and I have to move my V. So you get 3.14 V, remember cross multiply, equals 87.9. So V equals 87.9 over 3.14. And I ask my 30 cent calculator, 87.9 divided by 3.14, and I have 27.99. 363. And I look at my sig figs. This one has three sig figs. This one has three sig figs. My answer should have three sig figs. So it would be 28.0. Why is that not a choice? Oh, look at the wrong one. 28.0 milliliters. Four. An experiment requires four or 2.1 grams of alcohol. There's the density. What is the volume? Density equals mass over volume. Density is 0.790 grams and milliliters. These units matter. Here's grams, so my answer is going to come out in milliliters. Okay. So 0.790 and my mass is 42.1 V. So I'm going to cross multiply this all in one step this time. So V equals 42.1 over 0.790. Remember you can just swing those guys, trade places with them. And I would get, oops, I double equal signed it. So it really equals it. 42.1 divided by 0.79 is 53.2911. This again, this is going to be milliliters, but we want the answer in liters. So if I have, and I want three six figs. So if I have 53.3 milliliters, and I want to go to liters times dividing bar. Hate you milliliters. Love you liters. One thousand. So divided by one thousand is 0.05. Three, three liters, which is this one. What is density one gram per milliliter, which is objects will float in water? Only ones that are less dense. Okay. So remember, density is mass over volume. So for object one, it's going to be 50 over 60. That's going to float. The reason why it's going to float is because 50 is less than 60. Right? Um, mass 65, volume of that, 65 over 42 is bigger than 1, sink. Object 3, 100 is bigger than 20, sink. Which objects will float? Only number 1, and we're floating on down the road. Review, yay, review. Round to the fewest sig figs with times again divides them. Those are words. Round to the fewest decimal places with plus and minus them. More dense things think. And I believe that bricks are more dense than feathers. And density is a ratio of mass to volume. And toodles. She's a brick house. Toodles, brick house.